Hey there, I'm Brian Goulet of GouletPens.com. And if you are a Filofax fan, you may well be discovering this for the first time. You may be discovering me for the first time. Filofax is a brand that I've never carried before. They're actually distributed through the same company that distributes Lamy. So I've been aware of Filofax for quite a while, but they are much more into the planner kind of world, right? And which isn't really our scene. We're like all about some fountain pens here. We got a couple of planners, but not really focused on that too much. There's an extremely passionate community out there of people that are like rabid Filofax fans, right? Which is just awesome to see. A lot of on YouTube here, I've, I've come across a lot of you, some of you done like unboxing Goulet videos with some of your Filofax products and stuff like that. It's really cool to see, but I recognize that there's a lot of you Filofax fans who may be new to kind of this little fountain pen world. So you're kind of like crossing over into my turf now. Um, but uh, anyway, Filofax has come out with a notebook now. It's not a planner. So most of everything they've done is planners. Now this is kind of their first notebook, at least that I'm aware. Um, if I'm wrong, correct me, leave me a comment, let me know. But uh, I'm very excited about this. I'm going to give you an overview of this new Filofax notebook. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff going on with it, a lot of details. It's going to be a nice lengthy video, lots of meat for you to chew on, I guess. It's a weird way to say that. But anyway, um, these notebooks are very cool. I'm excited about them. They're brand new to the world as of the shooting of this video. Uh, so let's get into it. There are two sizes of the Filofax notebook. The larger size is called A5, and that is 6.3 by 8.4 inches, and that is $18.95, at least as of the launch, the shooting of this video here in February of 2015. And the smaller size is called the Pocket, and that is about 4.1 inches by 5.7, and that is $13.95. The cover colors, there's six of them that are available, and they're really pretty cool. Uh, there's aqua, black, blue, fuchsia, orange, and red. And they're all really pretty vibrant colors. They're a leatherette cover, so they are a flexible cover that kind of feels like leather. It's not really leather, as you would expect, given the price point. Um, but it's really, it feels kind of good. It's got this little bit of a texture to it, but overall it's generally kind of a smooth feel. It has a notch cut out in the top for this elastic strap, and the elastic straps on these notebooks actually match the color of the notebook. All of them do, so that's kind of cool. Um, and all of them except for the black have this white edging around it as well that gives it kind of a nice little pop of color that matches the wire binding as well. The only one that's different as far as the binding is the black one which has black wires. It kind of matches the black strap. Really kind of stealthy notebook. A couple of cool features about these covers is not only are they somewhat flexible but it lays perfectly flat when it's open so, and it's got um, relatively small wire bindings too, so it doesn't really get in the way while you're trying to write anything. And if you're writing, you know, traveling or writing on your lap or whatever, you can actually fold it all the way back on itself. And it still lays pretty darn flat, really neat. So there's lots of extra little features that you get with the Filofax notebook, just some nice little touches. The elastic strap is really kind of sturdy. It's got a nice snap to it. I have one that I've been using personally for about a month and a half or so, and it still holds really strong. Um, I feel like it's gonna hold up for a very long time. And it sits really nicely in this notch that they've got in the front cover. This is the only one that I've ever seen that has a notch like this. Um, so that's really kind of thoughtful. Then you open it up, it's got this nice double wire binding here, which is spaced out a little bit. It's got a little front page there, but it's spaced out so that you can easily get your fingers in here because the notebook has removable pages. That's part of the coolest thing about this notebook is it has this kind of D-punch shape in here and you can pull the pages out, you can push them back in, and you can move things around. And that's super helpful. In my kind of situation, what I do is I take notes at different types of meetings or I might, you know, have some notes from church and some from work or some at home, whatever. You can take, you can move the pages out and around. You don't have to get too stressed out about where you're writing in your notebook. You can just open it up, go and move the pages as you want. In addition to that, it comes with several dividers. So if you want to section things out, it's got these nice dividers here with a nice ruler slash bookmark that you can use to mark your page. And the dividers here are four different colors, blue, red, yellow, and purple. And the blue one has a pocket in it too. So if you want to carry some extra stuff in there, you can do that. 
Just like the sheets can be removed, so can the ruler and so can the dividers. So you really get to kind of customize it. Filofax is known all about doing customization and they've carried that through into this notebook. And then in addition to the stuff that you're getting in here, you actually get some spare sheets that they attach to the back because they have not only a line ruling, but they also have a graph and a blank as well. So if you like to do a little doodling or if you like to do some math, I don't know, what do you do on graph paper? Whatever you do on graph paper, you can do that with this. So it's kind of neat. You can move stuff around, shift it around, really kind of personalizes it. It's a nice little system. So the paper that comes in these Filofax notebooks, it's all lined. It's got a six millimeter ruling. You can get a graph and a blank option in a separate refill and put them in this notebook, but everything that comes loaded in here is lined. It's a 56 sheet count and 100 gram paper. So it's a pretty thick paper that way because it's got the removable pages, it's not gonna you know, flop and tear and all this kind of stuff. It's, it's a pretty sturdy weight paper. The line color is dark blue and it's a thin but yet very prominent line on here. So in addition to the notebooks that you can get with file effects, you can get separate refills. Now the refills are 32 page refills. So it's not quite enough to fill a whole separate notebook. So you may need to get a couple or whatever um, to kind of supplement whatever you have going on. So um, there are three different rulings that you can get. The six millimeter lined that is the same line size as what comes in the notebook originally. You can get a five millimeter graph, which is a standard graph size or blank. It's the same 100 gram paper that you can get, same off white uh, and everything. There are just a couple of little weird differences that I want to point out. And I don't really know why it is this way. I'm still trying to get some answers. Um, but the paper that comes in the notebook has every other line that doesn't go all the way to the edge. Okay, that's kind of interesting. And it's that way on the graph sample that comes with the notebook as well. For whatever reason, the paper that comes in the refills separately is not that way. The lines go all the way to the edge on both the graph and the lines. And also the lines themselves is a little bit different in color. It seems to be almost kind of a dark gray or like a gray blue as opposed to a kind of a pure blue. It's a very subtle difference, but it's enough to just kind of be like, why is it this way? I don't know. So it's just something that I wanted to point out to you so that if you are getting a refill and you notice it's a little bit different than the paper that comes with the notebook, you have been warned. The A5 size refill is $4.99 and the pocket refill is $3.99. So I want to do a writing comparison. Um, so different pen and ink combinations on the Filofax paper. Now, the first thing I want to say is this, this notebook is not necessarily like created for fountain pen people. It was certainly created with fountain pen people in mind, but Filofax as a brand is not like an exclusive fountain pen type thing. So they're trying to cater to pencils and roller balls and all kinds of stuff. So whenever you have a notebook like that, that's catering to a lot of different types of writing instruments, usually the paper is going to be a little more absorbent because people are using roller balls and pencils and things need a little more texture on the page and maybe want things to be able to dry and not smudge. So you're not going to get quite the ink resistance that you would on say like a Rodeo or Claire Fontaine, which is really kind of focused mainly for fountain pen folks. So that said, I wouldn't be carrying this notebook if I didn't think that it was good for fountain pens. It's definitely not like the best, like just, I'll just go ahead and say that now. It's not going to be, you know, you're not going to do ink washes and stuff like that on here. That's just, don't, don't even try that. But um, it's definitely going to be suitable for the vast majority of the way that most of you are using your fountain pens, which is why I'm even considering this notebook at all. Okay, so just kind of get that little disclaimer out of the way there because I know it's really, really important uh, for paper quality for, for fountain pen people, okay? So I got kind of a good arrangement of pens. I tried to get some that were really, really kind of on the safe side and I tried to get some that were really out on the edge and just push the limits and really try to max this paper's capabilities out. Um, so the pens that I selected were the Pilot Metropolitan with a fine nib, which is a really pretty safe bet, with Noodler's Heart of Darkness, which is one of the inks that is the best that I can think of for absorbent paper. Uh, another one that I went that was kind of a middle of the road, safe bet, maybe pushing the boundaries a little bit, is a Lamy All-Star in gorgeous ocean blue with Pilot Orochizuku Kanpeki, which is a pretty middle of the road ink, a little bit on the wet side maybe, but overall pretty good performing ink. Uh, fairly wet writing pen, 
And then I really wanted to just go nuts, so I took, took a Noodler's Neponset, which is an extremely wet writing flex nib pen with Diamine Apple Glory, which is one of the wettest, most abusive inks that I can think for absorbent paper. And then just to cater to the non-fountain pen folks, I uh, went with a Lamy Safari Rollerball with their standard M63 black refill, and what the heck, a Twisby 0.7 millimeter pencil. So that's what I chose to go with. And I used that on this paper. <clears throat> the Metropolitan uh, performed beautifully. The line is nice and tight. The ink is dark, no feathering, no bleed through on the back. Really uh, looks phenomenal. Overall, just a pleasure. Dries really quickly, no smudging, anything like that. Performed really well. The All Star with the 1.1 and Compeki um, did really well too. It absorbs quickly. That stub nib helps in that a little bit. If you go with like a broad nib or something, it's going to pull up the ink a little bit more, but even that performed well in some other tests I did. Um, overall, performed very well. The Noodler's Neponset with the Apple Glory definitely pushed the limits. You started to see especially when you flex that thing out, just how abusive this combination was towards the paper. And it really did max it out. It bled through onto the back, it feathered, but honestly, when you were using the pen in a, just a regular kind of normal way and not flexing it out like crazy, it actually kind of held up okay. So that was cool. The roller ball was absolutely no problem whatsoever. It was smooth, but the little bit of texture that you get on the paper held up really well, worked nice with that ball in the roller ball to keep it moving along, didn't clog up, didn't spit anything out, it was great. Um, and then the pencil was smooth, um, but uh, and I did it did wear it away a little bit. I don't really know that much about pencils, it kind of just wrote like a pencil, so I just wanted to give you the option to see what it looked like. And then if I flip it over on the back, you can see here that I did get some absolute uh, bleed through even a little bit onto the next page with that Apple Glory and the Neponset. But that's really the only thing that was any kind of a problem. I had maybe one little spot of bleed through on the back in the Heart of Darkness here where I was like crossing a T or something like that. Um, and then in the All Star, I think I maybe had one tiny, tiny little spot. But um, you don't really see a lot of uh, what's being written on the other side. So you can write on both sides of the page very comfortably. You don't have a lot of bleed through unless you're really trying to push the limits on it. But honestly, this paper has got a six millimeter ruling anyway. You're probably not gonna use something like a broad you know, music nib like you'd have in a Neponset. You're probably gonna go with something like an extra fine or a fine or even a medium. And that's gonna be kind of all you'd really wanna use in this ruling anyway. And that you're gonna be pretty safe with most of your ink combinations. So now let's do some comparisons. Because this is a whole new type of paper, whole new brand and everything from anything that I've carried, um, I wanted to compare it to some of the other kind of more popular stuff, give you an idea of maybe what this paper is like. So I use the same pen and ink combo that I used in the Filofax and use it on a couple other notebooks. So I'm gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison here. Um, on the right side, I have the Filofax. And on the left side, I have a Clairefontaine um, you know, A5 size. Clairefontaine uses 90 gram paper. Um, even though it's a slightly lighter weight paper than the Filofax, Clairefontaine, the way they make their paper, it's got more clay content, they put a lot more sizing on the paper, so it's a smoother, slicker paper, more ink resistant. And you can see when you're comparing them side by side, the color is gonna pop a little bit more on all these inks. And especially where you have the flex nib with the Neponset, the ink, you're gonna get a lot more shading, you're gonna get less feathering, pretty much no bleed through whatsoever, and the, all your lines are gonna look just a little bit crisper, but your dry time is gonna be much more extended. It's gonna have more of a tendency to smear. And part of the other reason I wanted to show you a side by side is the Clairefontaine has an eight millimeter ruling as opposed to the six millimeter ruling on the file effects. That's a pretty drastic difference. And the Clairefontaine has a bright white uh, paper and the file effects is an off white, really kind of a cream color. It's got a bit of a yellowish tinge to it as opposed to a gray tinge. Um, but you can see what it looks like next to basically a pure white. Another one I want to compare it to is the Rhodia Web Notebook. This is one of my favorite uh, bound journals out there. I use it personally. Um, this is actually my personal one that I've been using for years um, for various things. Um, the, you can really see in the side-by-side -side with this compared to the Filofax. They're both off-white, but the Rhodia really has a stronger yellow, a yellow color to it. And the Rhodia as well, similar to the Clairefontaine, more heavily sized, more clay, so it's going to have better shading 
The color is not necessarily going to pop quite as much as it did on the white Clairefontaine. Part of that is just an off-white versus a white paper in general. That's part of the appeal of off-white paper is you don't get like blindsided by some of these bright ink colors, especially like that Apple Glory and Compeki. These are very vibrant colors. So it's really nice when you're kind of reading back a full page of writing. It's not like, you know, you don't need sunglasses to be able to read these things. The Rhodia has a seven millimeter ruling on it. So that you can see comparison to the six. That's really kind of a preference thing. A seven millimeter is more like your traditional American college ruling. So six millimeter is gonna be a little bit tighter than what most of us here in the US are used to using. But you know, that might be your preference. So that's, that's where the Filofax would be really good. Last but not least, I grabbed a Lloyd Storm 1917. This is a, um, a dot grid, actually. So this is a five millimeter dot. So you can see what a five millimeter looks like next to a six millimeter. Um, Lloyd Storm has paper that is a little kind of on the same plane as the Filofax. But even the Lloyd Storm, you can see a little bit more shading. The color, it looks a little bit more saturated than it does on the Filofax. But the, the paper color itself is really pretty similar between these two. And the, um, the performance as far as dry time and things like that are gonna be really kind of more similar between the Leuchtturm and the Filofax. So if you're a big Leuchtturm fan, I think the Filofax is gonna be more in this vein than it would be with, say, the Rodian and Clairefontaine in terms of dry time, feathering, um, and, and all these such things. So that is my very comprehensive video on the new Filofax notebooks. You probably have some questions and that's totally okay. You can check out goodlaypens.com for more specific details, pictures, and other information. You can leave a comment on YouTube or on the blog and I will try to answer as many details as I possibly can. Thanks so much for watching this and if you like this video and you want more like it, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I would love to have you see more of what I have going on because I'm planning on doing a lot more cool stuff. Thanks so much for watching and right on.